and to me perhaps the epic product of everything that I have tried this year. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm not gonna make you wait too long. We're gonna dive in into the best luxury makeup products that were launched this 2022. And I try to focus on this video mainly on new products, like new formulations, something that we haven't seen before. I have here also some honorable mentions, whether they are products that they were reformulated and they did an amazing job with the reformulation. So let's dive in, let's dive in. Let's go first with primer, Tone 4, and his Traceless Soft Matte Primer. I'm almost done with this. I know, I know, I mean, I can feel it coming that one day soon I'm going to try to press and nothing is going to come out. That's how I feel about it. This is an excellent primer. By the way, if you're new here to my channel, welcome. Welcome to all of you, my dear friends. Thank you for being here with me. I will be leaving the details of each of the products that I'm talking about today. Everything will be on the description box below for your convenience, along with the links. And again, if you're new here to my channel, I do have dry skin on the primers of my face, a little bit of combination of skin right here in the middle where I have my enlarged pores, I have fine lines, I have wrinkles, I'm on my fourth floor, meaning that I'm over 40 years old. So um, I like makeup that doesn't emphasize all those signs of aging, but that rather give me a very natural, um, perfecting kind of look without being too makeup -y. Going back to primers, this is what it, this, that's for me. Although it says that it's a matte primer, it will not mattify your face. It will perfect your large pores. It will make them a little bit more bluer. Same thing with your fine lines. The plus about this primer is that it really does extend the longevity of the rest of your makeup. And that is magical from this specific primer. Now, if you want a primer that is a little bit more moisturizing, that it just give you a little bit of an not glow, but just it brings more moisture to your skin. And at the same time that it will blur those imperfections, I think Kali Ray did an amazing job with this So Blown primer. Honestly, a pleasure to have tried this primer. Let's go next for face tints, tinted moisturizers. And by the way, I have already done here on my channel my, the best of 2022 mid-year. So, I know you're going to be seeing a lot of products right here that are repetitive and those products that I'm not repeating, it's not that they don't shine. I still stand by that video and all my favorite videos, but these products right here, is, they are just, they, they gave me that little extra that I, I feel that they deserve a spot on this last year roundup of the best of the best. And here with an SPF by Hermes. And I know a lot of people, they are like, ah, this is not the best product because a lot of people are upset of how pricey it is Hermes, but man, that is Hermes. <laughs> Hermes is pricey all over, but it is a beautiful SPF. To me, this is an SPF 30 PA++, a complete SPF with pretty much a medium, even to full coverage. I will highly suggest it to apply it with your fingers. Also, sponge works really well. A little goes a long way, and I know you're gonna tell me, well, Jacqueline, SPF, you need more than a little. Yeah, so you can layer it, last all day long. It leaves my skin looking just perfected, natural, beautiful, and I do have reviews of each of the products that I'm talking about today, most of them, dedicated reviews to just that product so if you want to see like where test beginning to end i will highly suggest you you can check here on my channel my different playlists so you can find a dedicated review if you want to really see the product in action now talking about spf i think tower 28 did an amazing job with the sunny days this is a broad spectrum spf of 30 a little bit more moisturizing not so much of like a natural finish like the Hermes. This one has a little bit more of like a glowy finish, thinner in consistency than the Hermes, not as like perfecting, perfecting, but 
such a beautiful everyday SPF. Again, 30 SPF, beautiful. It comes in different shades too. Amazing job from Tower 28. Now, in terms of skin tints, I was really impressed about this Kali Ray Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint. So much so that I had bought it for my mother-in-law, my mother too, because it is soft, it's thin, it's natural, it doesn't emphasize the signs of aging, it's not silicone, it does have vitamin C in it, it doesn't have SPF, but in terms of a tint that it looks natural, that it has this beautiful glow, Calibrate, they did an outstanding job. And then I will say top, top favorite tint, is from Chanel. This is their new Water Fresh Complexion Touch. Now, what is the difference between this one and the water tint? This one has more pigment. It's just like adding, like say if you use the water tint, you use two pumps, you just need one pump of this. Basically, that's what it is. Now, a lot of people use it as a concealer. To me, it doesn't really work too much as a concealer, not because uh, it's not good as a concealer, but rather because I do have very dark under eye circles. And for me to cover my dark under eye circles, I need a color corrector or one concealer that I'm going to tell you very shortly <laughs> that is fantastic. But I really love how this complexion touch makes your skin look so perfected, glowy without looking greasy. My ideal way to use it is just with my hands. I like to use my fingers because it really gets in there on your skin and just gives you the absolutely beautiful, beautiful glow. Let's move on now into actual foundations. To me, wow, <laughs> Chanel did an incredible job. I mean, like Chanel, honestly, they do have some of the best foundations in the luxury world. And I think a lot of people nowadays are discovering Chanel. Numero 1 de Chanel, extraordinary, just beautiful. Moisturizing, thin in consistency, has a light to medium coverage, is not thick, it doesn't slip and slide, it looks natural with a subtle sheen to it. A little sheen that is borderline glowy, um, just fantastic. And then it's so long wearing. It's just, woof, just incredible. Now, perhaps the most perfecting foundation that I have on my collection, it is the Cushion Foundation by Sisley. It's called the uh, Fito Blanc Le Cushion. Now, the only bad thing about this foundation is only has like five different shades. I mean, like, it's just ridiculous. I wish that they could bring a huge amount of shades, like even if it was just 20 shades, but it will be just incredible because I have never tried before such a foundation that is as perfecting as this foundation. I mean, sorry that I have to put it right here, but honestly, and this is actually a reformulation, but I have, I have to tell you that if you have light complexion and you want to give it a try, give it a try because it's so perfecting, so beautiful. Um, it mesh in the skin just incredibly, incredibly well. Um, now going into a new foundation and this one is by Hourglass. Oh wow, what a beautiful surprise. This foundation, I was rocking it throughout pretty much the entire summertime. It's long wearing. It has a medium actually to full coverage. Very little goes a long way. I highly suggest you to spread it with a damp sponge. It will be the best way to go about it. And it just, it, it does have this soft focus effect that we know from our glass and their ambient line. And Charlotte Tilbury, she also brought us a great foundation. It's that beautiful skin foundation. Beautiful, <laughs> just beautiful. This is more of like a combination between her airbrush foundation that is just very perfecting but it's not mattifying but it's actually very i mean very obvious that you're wearing makeup and you just need very little this is kind of their glowy version of it it doesn't emphasize fine lines large pores texture it's beautiful and very perfecting and it does have a very very good coverage this one is a little bit more dewy than the hourglass the hourglass is 
a little bit more natural and very, very perfecting too. And I have to also mention Patrick Cha Foundation, which comes in this compact format. You need very little amount. And for being a cream foundation, I thought it was going to be, you know, sometimes cream foundations that they come on a compact, they tend to be a little bit oily-like, too dewy, just, just too much. They just look too creamy, right? This one doesn't at all and whatsoever. It does have a very natural finish. Again, same thing. I mean, like, that's what I like. I like foundations that they give me a natural finish with a subtle glow without being thick, thin, lightweight, that they will mesh with the skin really well. For the powder, I will suggest little goes a long way and do not use it on your under eye area. It may be a little too heavy for that delicate under eye area. And another reformulation, it is the Clé de Peau Da Foundation. This, you know, my friends, has been my foundation of choice for many years. And I was really scared when I heard that they were reformulating it, just as many other products from Clé de Peau. Basically, the main change right here is the SPF. This has 22 SPF instead of the 21 SPF. And that's it. It's thinning consistency, gel texture that is kind of even a little bit cool in effect. Very perfecting, very light. Very minimal. It's not a foundation for a night out, a foundation that is just going to be like, for example, to me, a foundation that is more for night out, it could be the Hourglass on the or the one from Charlotte Tilbury. But the one from Clé de Peau is like your e everyday skincare kind of foundation that you just put it on, makes it look perfect and it's thin and you don't feel like you're using it. That, that to me is also super important. Going into concealers, the only concealer... The only, only concealer that to me deserves a place right here. And in fact, it's actually my most viewed video when I review this concealer. Top high, you know, my friends, I do have very dark under eye circles blue in tone <laughs> they are just horrible it, it, they look so so bad and the highlight of this concealer is that is twin one it's a color corrector a concealer you don't need too much just two little dots that's all what you need per eye and it will just cover absolutely everything it lasts all day long if you don't want to set it just do not set it it's not going to crease on you it does give enough moisture in your under eye area it does have pigment i mean like which is this concealer that i'm raving about so much and to me perhaps the epic product of everything that i have tried this year and i know that may sound like oh wow really really because it's a game changer it's an absolute game changer i'm talking about chanel sublimage le correcteur you there's nothing nothing like this in the market telling you from my heart that this to me is the best investment if you have dark under eye circles, if you have aging under eye area, fine lines, and you want full coverage without making your under eye area looking cakey or aging you, this is it. Please go watch my review. It is just phenomenal, fantastic. And I know a lot of people at the beginning too, for me, I was like, why in a jar you know why in a jar and this concealer also has a skincare ingredients so anyhow i got used to just set it on my vanity table i just open it there's no mess honestly i use the spatula that comes in tap it lightly tiny amount that's all what you need two dots here on the front and use the brush that it comes with this brush it's part of all this magic the way that it spreads the amount of pigment you can build it if you want to but you don't need to honestly you don't even need to it's just fantastic incredible totally incredible so worth it and i know it's a pricey concealer but for the tiny amount that you need to me it's like buying 10 concealers of x other brand so it's completely worth it i mean it's been paid off. I will pay a lot more money buying so many other concealers in a tube that to me, this will last me more than a year. Next year, we'll see. But I'm pretty sure this will last me for a long, long, long time. Now, honorable mentions right here because why not, right? 
The concealer from Clay de Paul is a reformulation. Same thing hasn't changed. It's a stick, easy to take on traveling. For a spot concealer, it does have full coverage for your under eye area. It long lasting, it's non drying, it's not too creamy. As you can tell, it's not greasy looking. And again, it gives a natural, beautiful finish. Mentioning it because again, it was reformulated this year. Then the Kofi Concealer, another great concealer, natural finish. You will need to use a color corrector if you have this coloration under this under eye area. And then the one from Charlotte Tilbury, the beautiful skin radiant concealer. This concealer to me is a little bit tricky because I do have such dark under eye circles and those who have dark under eye circles will agree with me that when you use a brightening concealer, sometimes it can give you a great cast. It's just the combination between that white undertone of the concealer along with the bluish tone or green tone of your dark under eye circles that can give you a very off kind of look. So I feel definitely that this concealer pairs along really well with the Magic Away co um, Color Corrector from Charlotte Tilbury. Use it in combination and you will see a great look. Also, you can use it, say for example, if you're using this Chanel concealer, you can just use it on the areas that you wanna bring forward to brighten that area if you want to. Great concealer nonetheless, not full coverage, light to medium coverage, same thing as the Kofi concealer. This one has a little bit more glow to it, while the Kofi one is a little bit more between natural matte kind of finish. But yeah, to me, this is it. If I had it, if I had to summarize my best of 2022, okay, this is it. Bye. See you later. Okay, friends. Just kidding. Now let's go into powders. Not too many. What's my atelier? One of them, very natural, soft kind of powder, thin in consistency. It's a powder that you're gonna need to reapply. It's not gonna just contain all your oils. And, you know, you, you just need to reapply it, but I like how thin it is. It has this blurring effect that is very, very beautiful. And overall, a great powder that doesn't make you look 10 years older. Really great, great powder. Now, if you want something a little bit more perfecting, something that is a little bit more, I like to say, the Gucci powder that makes your skin look a little bit more of like a porcelain doll, Christian Louboutin make a stunning job with this setting powder. Super silky, super, super silky. And it also, as you can tell, is not thick in consistency, it's non powdery. It does have actually a sheen that is not a highlighter, but it just have that natural kind of look of skin. You know, when your skin is healthy, hydrated, that's the way that it looks. And it comes in different shades, which I find it really, really nice. I mean, to deeper shades actually, which is great. You can use it if you have moisturizer and you want to use it as say a powder foundation, you can use it as such if you want to, or you can use it on your enlarged pores area and it would just blur and perfect everything. And like, like I said, just give you this porcelain doll kind of effect. Now for finishing powder, the only one that honestly just whoo, has blown my mind is by Shantekai. This is from their holiday collection. This is the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. So this is not equal to the setting powder that we know from Shantikai, the blur setting powder. This just gives the, the most beautiful like aura effect to your skin. I like to use it to buff my face. There's no glitter, there's no shimmer. It's just, it's just silk. It's like putting a veil of silk on your skin that just finish everything off and just makes every single thing just look absolutely perfect. So that's for finishing powder and now going into bronzers. For cream bronzer, I have to give it to Charlotte Tilbury. She created a stunning bronzer. It has a dense consistency, clay-like, if you have ever touched clay or play with clay, kind of that density, but that doesn't mean that it will grab on your foundation. Actually, it's really easy to spread. The shades are gorgeous. The perfect shade match for me is shade number two. It does have a little bit of a Doré kind of undertone. 
just absolutely beautiful and a little goes a long way and again i like that when i first tried it honestly i was like okay this is dense it's gonna start you know like lifting up my foundation it it doesn't completely at all and whatsoever no no problems on that and then although this is not a new formula definitely deserves a place in here and it's one that i had been using a lot is chanel and this is the soleil tandy chanel in medium bronze 392 so the first one was the universal then they changed it for 390 is the the number then last year they came out with 395 which has a red undertone and then this year they came out with 392 a medium tone that for my light to medium complexion works just wonderful and it does have more of a doré kind of look a little bit more of that golden goddess kind of yeah bronze that is just oh, so yummy so incredible definitely chanel needs to work a little bit faster on creating deeper shades i think if they add at least two shades on the deeper spectrum because although 395 is nice and deep like i can use it but i have to use a very very little amount and like i said it has a reddish undertone i think they need to expand on the opposite side at least two to three shades minimum and that will give a great balance for this type of bronzer that just give you know that perfect bronzer skin for summertime it's just absolutely sunny and not only summertime i mean all year round then another cream bronzer and this is not really a reformulation but actually tom ford they just basically redid their shades intensity one there's just slight slight difference i do have a review on this one and intensity two fantastic two i really love that they change the top shade which is the highlighter but it is the same beautiful formula super creamy it's a contour bronzer that is not too ashy is not too warm tone is not orangey it just works fantastic just works fantastic i have to mention it because although again not new <laughs> in formulation i think the way that they rework the shade range it's something to take a note of because we have all been asking cater for more skin tones even if you have just four or 12 shades of such product but just stretch it right and that's exactly what tom Ford has done and what we are seeing from chanel doing so i i really appreciate that now in terms of powder bronzer now this bronzer is not new from this year but is one that has taken my heart it is by valentino beauty and oh my gosh if i cannot open this thing it is the bronzer in universal and hear me out there's no universal <laughs> but they come in different shades and you think i can open this oh there you go well this is a refill and it has the most gorgeous golden tone that is not orange and this is the thing with valentino all their powder products from blush to setting powder to bronzer they are all of the same formulation even the eyeshadows and it's a formula that i have not really tried in many other brands it's seamless it's a smooth it's silky it's not too shiny it's not too creamy it feels like cream but it goes like powder and it it's just so airbrushed so airbrush beautiful beautiful product from valentino when i close it again i need to get the case i know i didn't want to get a case but i need to get a case because it's just ridiculous trying to open that plastic refill <laughs> okay friends and then one that it really surprised me is this one by house labs i was a little bit not hesitant in a bad way to try the new rebrand of lady gaga but i was like I'm not in a rush and then during the sephora holiday savings event i was like well you know what it looks nice and i was able to touch them at at the store when i was at sephora and i'm like mm, this looks this this feels creamy and nice what a pleasant surprise also a great great bronzer and you know what honestly as technology is moving forward this is what is going to be really hard to decide which are the best best products because we see these formulations that they are just outstanding that they are just like set another mark another level and it's all a matter to just see preference on shades but 
yeah honestly house labs lady gaga fantastic job now this is perhaps one of my most used bronzers of the year i know i know so sad so sad but i think there's a few <laughs> left out there not in boutiques but in a few websites i have seen it this is the chanel oversized sun kiss powder in sun kiss medium this came with the levage collection oh it's sun kiss is so beautiful it does have this beautiful sheen it kind of reminds me a little bit of the tom ford bronzer the shade um gold gold last this gold last yeah that beautiful and this is the thing with chanel the the bronzers like this they are limited edition they don't bring it back they need to bring it back because the formula here fascinating if you want this formula i will highly suggest it to go and get it and this this is one bronzer that i have a backup when i don't need any backups because i do have i don't say it with any pride i have a ton of makeup because i review makeup here but is that good that i have a backup and I know you really well. I know that you want to see what are those favorite eyeshadow palettes. And Tom Ford bless us with his new creme eyeshadow formulation. Any one that you pick and choose are fantastic. One of my favorite ones is Tiger Eye because I really love kind of that golden tone. Not really copper, but more of like J-Lo vibe. And this just gives it to me in a concise four eyeshadows it is very alike to the wet to dry formula but you don't need to wet it very very alike exquisite super soft super creamy also i love rose topaz which is more of a cool tone take look at this shade wet and gorgeous so 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 elegant also violet satin this was part of his fall collection look at this shade all these shades they just again look wet they are just beautiful creamy and very elegant and then this baby right here i'm not a person that uses a lot of green i'm honest with you and you all know but velour khaki oh another one just stunning and they they are just not fussy, you know, like they are so, you with very simplistic way to achieve the most sophisticated looks. This new Tom Ford creme formulation, honestly, wow. Simply wow. And also from Tom Ford, the Meta Last Eyeshadow Quad. This came out at the end of last year. It was really hard to get your hands on. And unfortunately it was a limited edition, but I have to mention it. Obviously these two shades are the ones that are like, oh, what incredible wet. I hope the camera is able to show it to you like how beautiful are these shades. They are just fantastic. If it comes back in the stock, I will highly suggest you for you to, you know, just, just go and grab it. Just go and grab it. And then a mention right here, quick mention, if you were not able to get your hands on the Tom Ford Metal Last, check the Giraffe Eyeshadow Quad from Chantecaille. Also another wet kind of formula. Beautiful. This one has even a little bit of like a lilac undertone the mattes in here are incredible super soft super smooth and by the way if you want to know what i'm using as far as makeup i have already recorded a video using some of the best makeup of 2022 so be on the lookout for that because i will show you how i created this look but anyhow moving on right here wow anastasia beverly hills came back strong and i'm just so happy she did so with the nouveau palette to me, this was epic for Anastasia Beverly Hills, an eyeshadow palette that can take you all year round, spring, summer, fall, and winter. I remember when every when this launched, everybody's like, but that's a fall palette. No, I you can literally do looks for all year round. I think this is a beautiful palette. Love this lily shade. It's like a rose gold with a little bit of like a peach undertone. I love also Isle, which it has this kind of like very interesting yellowy peachy tone oh just just beautiful just beautiful the formula it's a little bit more creamy 
yes, you find a little bit of kickback, but it's not as powdery as previous Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows. I think she did an incredible job. And one of my very, very favorite palettes of the year is the one by Natasha Denona. This is my dream palette. What a dream. This to me is the epic palette from Natasha Denona. We find here her cream to powder formulation. We have a duochrome that looks just stunning. This shade is fantastic, the shade Babies. Oh, and then the shade Thrill, I mean, you name it. This palette is lovely, just lovely. You have some new tones, some neutrals, some warm tones, some burgundy or like eggplant tones. Oh, just, just fantastic. I mean, Natasha Donna has done in, an incredible job this year with all of her palettes, but my dream palette is the one that definitely takes my heart and one that I will highly, highly recommend for you to pick up because this palette is just, it's just a masterpiece, a masterpiece from Natasha Denona. Going next with Chanel, oh, not other than the tweets. Yes, the tweets. Um, the two that I love is Broom et Rose. Oh, this, this is my new one. <laughs> yes, I decided to get a backup because these are limited edition. Pretty sure they are already sold out and gone. If I find them, I will link them for you. But oh, oh yes, this is a dream palette. It's a cool tone palette. Not only the embossing is beautiful, but also I'm really, really happy that Chanel is bringing us a different formulation because here you find, let me show you, this is my next favorite also from the tweets this is called tweet courre you have this shimmery fine fine glittery kind of shade a creamy metallic shade i mean honestly yes yes chanel did this something that is a little bit unexpected it still will give you the very chanel sophisticated look thin formula but the beautiful payoff that is just fantastic. And again, I really love that Chanel decided to branch out and bring us a little bit of different textures, different formulations, something that I truly appreciate. Then Charlotte Tilbury, she brought Pillow Talk Dreams. <laughs> what a dream. This is what to me was supposed to be the original Pillow Talk. And I say that in the most kind way because it is a palette that honestly different skin people with different skin tones can use it it does have too much shades it does have a beautiful pop shade i don't even know where to swatch them anymore but it just gives that very signature look from charlotte tilbury that angels kind of look yeah victoria's secret angel vibe that pillow talk look that is just so unique to Charlotte Tilbury all condensed in just four eyeshadows to me I mean I have a lot of favorites from Charlotte Tilbury but from her pillow talk line highly highly suggest you this pillow talk dreams palette and then also from Charlotte Tilbury wow she didn't brought us this year a 12 fan palette like she usually does but rather she brought us her pop shots and I love these pop shots because they just have so much power I will highly suggest you to use them with your fingers to get the best payoff she brought us no joke, a duochrome that I absolutely love. This is kind of like a mermaid kind of, oh, just so good. So, so good. I really love the two tones of the purple with the turquoise. Oh, wow. And then she brought us this beautiful shade, Emerald Eyes. Now, this have another texture. This is more metallic. Oof. Just extraordinary and then if you want something a little bit more not too much a little bit more i, I don't want to say appropriate but more common you're not a person that likes to use too much you know different colors on your eyelids i will highly suggest go with smoky quartz i think it's called yeah smoky quartz it's kind of this taupey shade a little bit more deep very sophisticated oh i don't even I don't even know where to keep swatching, but a beautiful, beautiful shade. So if you're more minimalistic 
perhaps you just want to use your bronzer as your matte eyeshadow and then just go with a pop, you know, Charlotte Tilbury. These are limited edition though, so when they are gone, they will be gone. And then Charlotte Tilbury also expand a little bit her cream eyeshadows and the two exaggerize if you want wet eyelids. This is just stunning. This will give you the most beautiful wet eyelids. And as you diffuse it, it just creates a very ethereal kind of look. And then the other shade that I absolutely love is Sunlit Glow, which it has a little bit of like yellow and peach. And yeah, it's just, it's just fantastic. Fantastic. It's a fantastic shade. It's a very different shade. It has peach in it. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Mostly for summertime. Oh, just stunning. The formula is so easy to use. Again, if you're more minimalistic, you don't want to add, you know, big palettes. You want something more condensed. These, these are definitely it. And then in terms of bigger palettes, I have to give it to Burberry. Honestly, they don't shower us with so many different eyeshadows and different makeup, but when Burberry comes out with something, they do it right. And this palette is just insane. It is expensive, but you receive so much product. I mean, the weight here, it is 20 grams. That's a lot of eyeshadow, a lot. And different shades, Look at this. Look at this green. Look at this beauty. Look at this. <laughs> this is just fantastic. And this palette is also limited edition. And I feel like Burberry, they need to do something more. Not really like keep pushing so many releases like other brands, but kind of like do something like say Givenchy, that they come out with very little collections. So people start talking more about Burberry because honestly, oh, incredible job. An incredible job, a palette that I will highly suggest. I know it's expensive, but it's a palette that if you want neutral, sophisticated eye look, if you want cool tones and warm tones and you want everything condensing, just nine eyeshadows, I mean, this is a no, no brainer. And then here, Pat McGrath, wow, she really surprised us with this baby. I think this is one of my favorite palettes from Pat McGrath because she brought us an upgraded matte formulation and also this wet eyeshadow that I don't know where I'm gonna swatch it, but where am I gonna swatch it? Right here. <laughs> that is stunning, stunning. So she created a beautiful, beautiful formula. I wish to see more of this formulation, not only on her mothership palettes, but on this format. I think it's um, it's more economic and it's easier when you have an eyeshadow palette that doesn't have too many things, but yeah, she did an incredible job. This is Pat McGrath Nirvana Eyeshadow Palette in Bronze Blitz. If you wanna have the most amazing, stunning, smoky eye look for this holiday season you know where to get it and talking about Pat McGrath I have to give it that this year she brought us a gorgeous mothership palette which mothership palette is this I don't even remember is it number 10 or number 11 I don't know I don't remember honestly but this palette honestly one of the most wearable eyeshadow palettes mothership palettes from Pat McGrath but this shade is what it takes the trophy because there's nothing like this shade. I wish it was full in a single and I love this cool tone shade too. It has a little bit of that lilac tone that we have seen a lot this year. Look at that. Like, look at that. Wet, creamy, well done, a really nice creation. Yes, I do have my sayings here on these two shades being too close like, but nonetheless, the entire eyeshadow palette, it's one that really deserves a spot on these favorites of 2022. And every year, Huda Beauty brings a big palette during the holiday season and she doesn't disappoint. That Empower palette. This palette, stunning. Two gorgeous gold shades. This is one of my favorite shades. It's called Bold Moves. 
I love this shape manifest. It's a cream kind of gel-like that is super beautiful. And then these two shades right here, the black and these kind of like deep brown, cool tone brown, it just give the perfect base for these eyeshadows to grab on and to intensify. Honestly, this Empower eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty is, is just incredible. I really love the tones that she used here, a little bit of warm tone, and then bringing us, again, these burgundy tones that we haven't seen this year, eggplant tones, deep, intense, and then that gold shade that just brings a little bit of that regal kind of look. Oh, fantastic. All the formulations here from mattes to metallics to shimmers, all of the formulas that she is bringing us here, they are some of the best on the entire Huda Beauty collection. And I have all her eyeshadow palettes. So that, that's to say quite a bit. In terms of Lisa Elbridge, she launched her new eyeshadow palettes and I have to give it to none other than Sorcery. What a sorcery. She, I mean, like you can see the love that Lisa Elrich has for her artistry. Look at this shade right here. She did honestly a beautiful job with her eyeshadow palettes. All of them, they have different formulas. I think there are five or six different formulations. I did a full on review. The one that I like the very most, because although it looks very green, you can achieve blue eyeshadow looks here too is sorcery and then the other one that i like quite a bit it is vega i think honestly vega it's something a little bit more wearable cool tone but it does have a little bit of a different take of a cool tone bringing this blue shade that is a little bit more concrete like and then you have this cool tone kind of like between a rose gold and a champagne tone very very pretty but more than anything very soft creamy it's kind of like even some of her matte shades i think it's it's not the velvet formula she has two type of matte formulations they are just very creamy and very workable very easy to use and i knew i knew lisa elrich wasn't gonna fail us in terms of eyeshadow palettes and then dior doesn't fail right here i already showed it on my mid-year but Poplin, i know that you're not able to get your hands on it but i know <laughs> spring is coming and they will bring us something alike to these i just have to mention it if you are able to find it if somebody's selling it i will say go get it it's such a beautiful beautiful eyeshadow palette from dior and then i have a quick mention right here of the makeup by mario eyeshadow palette I'm honestly very impressed about this eyeshadow palette from Mario. I think he he did a really, really good job on all these shades that are more of kind of like toppers, some metallic shades. They look beautiful. If you were not able to get your hands on, say, the Metal Last palette from Tom Ford, highly suggest you to take a look to this makeup by mario eyeshadow palette love the formulation of the mattes very unlike to anastasia beverly hills mattes in terms of like the kickback not a lot but soft smooth very easy to apply and super easy also to diffuse without losing pigment and that's another thing that i like about this palette too is that you can build on pigment something that sometimes with certain eyeshadow palettes you cannot do and therefore if you are a makeup artist, you know very well, then you cannot, it's not the, the eyeshadows that you can use it for, for all of your clients because it's just for certain skin tone. This one is truly, you can see the passion of a makeup artist creating an eyeshadow palette that is, that it can cater for so many skin tones. And because we're talking about the eye area, mascara, Isu mascara hasn't changed at all. It's the mascara that I'm having right now. It gives me volume, definition, length. Um, it's not clumpy, doesn't flake, it doesn't itch, nothing. I know 
a lot of people will be raving about the, tw the Tower 28 mascara. It's a really good mascara, but for some reason, after a little while, it becomes just too dry. So it doesn't, it's not one mascara that it will last me for a long time, although it's a beautiful mascara too. Then for eyeliner, liquid eyeliner is really nothing, but the eyeliner that I use it on my waterline. It's a beautiful gel eyeliner. It's by Hourglass. The shade that I use the most is Cave. Precious. Simply precious. And then for brows, Florasis, that powder brow pencil. It's so good to fill in your brows. It doesn't give you hair like strokes it's just really to fill in your brows but super easy and it comes in different shades really really good one if you like the one from gucci the powder one you will love the one from florasis too into blushes let's give it to gucci oh wow gucci never fails <laughs> never fails they brought some of the most beautiful shades a ton of shades i bought every single one of them my favorite one i have to say is rosy beige number five but any of them, the beautiful thing about these blushes is that they are silky, um, they are non-patchy, they are long-wearing, and also you are able to build them. So it's not that, okay, I just touch a little, oh, it's giving me a little bit of shade. No, you can build it up the intensity. And that's something that I really appreciate because that makes them a little bit more chameleonic and it actually caters for more skin tones. So definitely, I mean, like Gucci did. Wow, what an extraordinary job. And not a lot of people talk about the Suku melting blushes. Also, what a formula. This formula is very alike to the Valentino um blushes in in that term that is very like creamy skin like silky to touch just precious the shade that i love is 09 karenzaki i will be again leaving it on the description box below but a beautiful beautiful formulation and this is specific shade is kind of like that natural neutral look kind of like rosy beige from gucci i like to that and Although I have mentioned it on my mid-year best of 2022, this baby by Tom Ford is Eclat Nu. And as you can tell, I had been using it quite a bit. You need a stiffer kind of brush in order to pick up the product and really concentrate it. For some reason, this specific formula, it blurs the imperfections, it blurs enlarged pores. It, it is a formula that I wish that Tom Ford will bring it as a finishing powder or as a setting powder because it's one that it will give you that porcelain dull kind of finish that to me looks i know it may sound a little bit unrealistic but honestly it gives you the best of your skin you know the 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 best look how healthy your skin will look like rms wow <laughs> i was a little bit hesitant to try these new blushes from rms because honestly i thought they were more highlighters and it's something that i'm steering away from but they are not i know that they look super super shiny and super beaming but they are not gonna emphasize your large pores your texture this is one of my favorite shades too pomegranate fees my tie and my top top favorite from these rms blushes is maiden's blush again Another blush, kind of like rosy beige from Gucci. I mean, you you can see like the type of blushes that I like, kind of like this um, cool rosy tone with a little bit of tan undertones. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And then this palette by Charlotte Tilbury. Oh my gosh, this is Charlotte Tilbury signature in a palette. This is it. This is it. This is. Pillow Talk Vibe, you can you cannot see any more <laughs> than Bossing. She did an incredible job. I wish she would come out with these blushes and these highlighters too in single pans because the formula is these are not truly highlighters, they are again luminizers and the blushes they are super silky. They're just a pleasure. I'm like you can barely see it in your finger because they are just thinning formula and so perfecting and super 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 silky. And from Chanel, they are water fresh blushes. I have full demo on these blushes. They are a little bit tricky now in terms of they will give you a patchy finish, but you have to let them set on a little tray 
disperse it. Use a stippling kind of brush and then you will break the pigment. And then the beautiful thing about these blushes is that if you let them sit a little bit more and then you build it up after they dry, they develop to be a little bit deeper in tone and more alike to what you see on the swatch. Love all the shades. Perhaps my most used shade is Deep Apricot followed by Intense Coral and then Warm Pink. And then a new category for all of us are Luminizers. Yes, you heard it well. They're not highlighters anymore. Yes, they are Luminizers. They are those quote-unquote highlighters that they don't give you a stripe of pigment, but rather a beautiful glow from within that your that, that your skin looks just healthy, just healthy. There's no like, oh, here it's pink and it's, it, it's all yellow. No, it's just like, oh, your skin is looking healthy. And one that I haven't been able to stop using much is this one by Shantekai. It is the Yersambin Cheek and Eye Shade in Gray. This was part of their summer collection. I know a lot of people didn't like the packaging, but in terms of the formula, the formula is exactly that, a luminizer. Something, all of these on this category, when you hear me, a glow from within, a aura effect, a, a, a just like that an angelic kind of finish, these are those luminizers. Chanel, <laughs> obviously Chanel and the Aref de Camellia. Again, this one, in fact, I have used it as an all-over powder, like a finishing powder too, because it has this chameleonic kind of effect that it's in a way a luminizer, in a way a finishing powder. I don't think it's available anymore, but hmm, just so, so beyond good. And also from Chanel, I think these are still available, are these oversized huge <laughs> highlighters that are just, again, incredible, super soft, thin, no shimmer, no glitter. You can use it for your shoulders, you know, to add some shine on your legs, on your arms. Now that holiday parties are coming, this is what you want to use. Something that will give you, oh, you look glowy, you look beautiful, but you don't look like you have glitter, like you're a glitter bomb. Not at all and whatsoever. And then Clé de Peau reformulated their luminizing face enhancers. They did a stunning job. This is in the shade 203. No shimmer, no glitter. There's a little bit of shimmer on the first try. It's just kind of like an overspray. And then after that, all what you find is, again, this beautiful luminizer that it just mesh with the skin so well. And then to the last category, lipsticks. First one's Merit. Merit Beauty, they brought us their signature lipsticks. Love how you can build on pigmentation. So you can tap it and use it kind of like a kind of like not lip gloss, but just like a little hint, a little tint. You can build on the pigmentation and they never, never feel thick. Another thing that I love about these lipsticks from Merit is that although you can find like a nudie pink tone and a nude tone like brown undertone, right? They are not your typical shades. I cannot find in all the A shades from Merit, I cannot find an exact dupe for these shades. They are just very specific and very different, even though they are familiar to the eye. The shades that I love are Baby, Sleep, a nudie tone, and then also 1990. A more of like a cool tone, kind of brown shade, very 90s vibe. I mean, the name says it. And then Francois Van Nutten. Wow, excuse me. I need to get more shades. I think this is the shade number 14. A gorgeous cool tone shade. A satin finish that is not overly creamy, overly dewy. And then from Pat McGrath, on her Bridgeton collection, she launched new shades in this very beautiful satin formulation. And the shade Negligé, oh, fantastic. 
then Sisley brought us a little bit more of lip shines and the shade that I enjoy all year round is Sheer Nude number 10. If you have Boy from Chanel, this is the equal part of Sisley. Super creamy, super moisturizing, beautiful tone. I mean, all the tones, but Sheer Nude is my favorite one. And then Dior brought us their lip shines. And you can buy different cases, have fun with them. Some of my favorite shades, let me tell you. Atelier, which is kind of like a mauve tone. Then I have here Nude Look, a nudie tone. Fantastic shade too. And I have a review on all of these. These are so comfortable. You have to reapply them. They are nothing that they are going to stay there forever, but so good. Oh, and this was my favorite shade during summertime. It's called, I cannot see, oh, Mimi Rose. Such a pretty shade. And again, you can build on pigment. They make your lips look super juicy, super beautiful. Chanel also launched something I like to the Sisley and Dior. These are the Rouge Coco Bounce, but now they have pigment and they do have plenty of pigment so you can actually build up look at this shade isn't that gorgeous this was one of my most used shades 914 natural charm very it's not as moisturizing as the ones from dior but yet it gives that comfort to your lips again clinical reformulating so many of their products some of them, they are lipsticks. I love this shade. It's called Tantalizing. Oh, so good. And as you can tell, all of these are satin finishes. And I also love Tromfan Tone. And this one is a little bit pinkier in tone. Super pretty as well. See, the camera can focus right there so you can really see all the tones. I know this is really hard and I'm battling right now that it's getting dark and I film in natural light. So if the light is gone, then I cannot keep filming. And then Chanel brought us a full array of nude lipsticks. They are Rouge Allure Formula Mise Anou. 195. So good. So, so good. It's so pretty. Another shade, it is Illusion 206. Fantastic shade. A demi mm, If you want this pinky kind of tone that is a new tone too, a demi mm. Another incredible formulation, Natasha Denona. She redid her Natasha shade in a more creamy, more thicker kind of formulation. I love this shade. This goes with every single smoky eye look. It's just perfection. It's the perfect pinky shade. In terms of juicy lipsticks, Hourglass, all these lipsticks, they are just so juicy, so, so creamy. They just make your lips look like extra, like fabulous. And then, Lip glosses, you can see right here, Victoria Beckham Beauty. Her lip glosses, they have a little bit of a tint. They are nice, moisturizing. They are not thick in consistency, not gonna be goopy. They are just fantastic. They make your lips look wet. Same thing with Natasha Denona, also from my dream collection, her lip gloss. This is a must for me. I hope that she decided to keep it on her collection because it's just, Absolutely stunning lip oil, none other than Hermes. And the shade, it is Rose Cola. And yes, it smells like Coca-Cola. Oh, this is so, so good. And from Lisa Elrich, she always brings us so many different lipsticks, but I have to give it to this specific lipstick. It's a matte formulation. It's called New Wave. This is a stunning magenta shade that looks just gorgeous. Simple look, just mascara, put this on, and wow, people are just gonna turn and look at you like, wow. 
she has personality. <laughs> That's all what I'm going to tell you. And then in terms of matte lipsticks, Gucci and their liquid lipsticks, they are thin formulation. They are not too drying. They are long lasting, very, very nice formulation for being matte. And then something I like in terms of non-drying, kind of like the Lisa Elrich lipsticks that they have a lot of pigment, they are super soft and they don't feel super drying, are the new Rouge Dior lipsticks. Also the matte formulation, as you can see, has a matte casing. Favorite shade is Forever Feminine. It has these beautiful, you have to see it on the lips to really appreciate it. Kind of like orangey, fiery tone. And obviously 999, which is the typical classic Christian Dior shade. Ooh, fantastic. Okay, my friends, and this is it. These are the best luxury makeup of 2022. Which are the products that you consider the best of the best of this year? Let's continue the conversation on the comment section down below. While you're at it, and if you haven't done so yet, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. And come and follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. If you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, share with family and friends. And if you're not done watching my content, I will be leaving a couple other videos right here that I'm sure you're gonna love. Until the next time, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. Goodbye.